Hey guys, EST here, and we're joined by my grill just for safety reasons because, and this may surprise you, I got a new toy. So let's uh, slap a little surface on here. Oh yes, we've got the world's smallest lighter. Just kidding. It's um basically a Zippo knockoff, but it's called an infinite match or eternal match or something like that. And I got five more for when I blow this one up because this had absolutely no indication of what fuel to use with it. Maybe I think it said Zippo fuel, but I don't currently own any. But you know from watching this channel that uh, I'm not exactly short on combustible petrochemicals. So uh, let's see what we can fill this with and get it to work. But first I guess uh, I'll show you how it works. Uh, it unscrews here. It's metal to metal. It's got a little uh, rubber grommet and uh, that's the body. That's the little bit of wick right there. And then you run it down here. Oh, it's got a pretty good spark. All right, so it's just a reservoir in there and uh, not much more to it. So I got all five of those for under 10 bucks in 2023. That's why I caught my eye. I thought, I've got to test it. So filling this is going to be a real treat. Look how big that isn't. I don't have a funnel that big. I don't have like an eyedropper. So we're just going to wing it. So I'm going to run something in it that allegedly won't work. At least uh, I found a list of like Zippo fuel alternatives for actual Zippos. And people said that uh, this is not a good idea, so let's try it. It's lighter fluid, also known as hexane. Oh yeah, well, that was efficient. So I've already noticed an issue here besides filling it. <laughs> you see, I, I made some changes. Uh, we're going to have an open fuel canister with like fumes coming out of it, and then an open flame right next to it. That seems like a bad idea. All right, I clearly overfilled it. That's, that's going to be an issue. Let me clean this up a little bit. Let's try this the safer way. Oh, look at that. Okay. It's not bad. This actually really goes for a while because uh, the wick goes all the way down and then it kind of wicks up. I'm impressed so far, but let's see if I don't light my hands on fire. I've got a bucket of water right off screen. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Oh, come on. Well, yeah, if it fires down, of course it won't light the wick. Huh, that is interesting. Hmm. Very bad design. Maybe it's not built for this fuel, but still, I don't know. Hexane's pretty flammable. Oh boy. Maybe I need a better angle. Oh, I had it for a second. I just poured it all over my gloves again. Not the best design. All right, I'm gonna take the soaked one and test it with uh, a completely brand new one that hasn't been filled with anything just for safety here. Oh, come on. Oh, I didn't expect it to be this hard. I saw a flame briefly though. Oh, if your fingers were cold, which, spoiler alert, it's 33 degrees out right now and snowing. Uh, yeah, this might <laughs> get a little tedious. I've got a better idea. There we go. I gotta say, not the best ferro rod in the world here. <laughs> I'm trying an alternate method. Uh, if it wasn't on a flat surface, I'd probably have this by now. But, lighter fluid doesn't always light with, um, ferro rods. Okay, let's try, I guess, camping fuel. It's a mix of, I think, heptane up to nonane or something. <laughs> this ain't safety first, safety second, or safety in the top ten. <laughs> All right, let's try it with Coleman, whatever was left in the distiller fuel, which is their version of camping fuel. Here we go. 
I just, I don't see how it's supposed to get on the wick if it all goes down here. Am I just doing this wrong? Oh, oh, ooh. Don't hold it at that angle. I don't got my thumb a little bit. But, uh, hey, it lit. Fantastic. A use for that trash fuel. Well, now that I'm not holding it, let's see how long it goes. And it is metal, so it's going to get your finger eventually. But, uh, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, almost a minute burn time there. That's not bad. Now, here's your problem with these. I thought that this was a fiberglass wick. It looks like it's fiberglass mixed with cotton because it looks to me like it burned down. And I could tell that this is some kind of melted something. I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't think this is going to light a second time no matter what I do. So it's not really much of a wick. And that's the, the drawback. I was kind of on the fence about this, but now I really don't like it. Now let's try it a second time. Get it all soaked in there. Okay. Keep my finger away. Oh, okay. I mean, if it's going to work, that's definitely not the same length wick that it was before, but uh, that red part right there, that's never going to focus, sorry. Uh, that might be the fiberglass portion, but it definitely burns something off. But those are like little, little gas bits there. I wouldn't count on this, but it's kind of neat. It comes down to the durability. And I've already been told don't use uh, rubbing alcohol with this. So I guess you're, you're stuck with either Zippo fuel, camping fuel, or I still feel like hexane should have worked. So the question is, will this spill fuel all over your bug out bag or wherever you've got this? Um, durability wise, let's see. I'm going to try and crush it. I mean, it is pretty much aluminum, but I can tell that's uh, plastic or something. So, okay. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Okay, the aluminum was just a show. I see. <laughs> so it's made out of la plastic. And um, yeah, I can flex it pretty good. But this is pretty tough plastic. Okay. Uh, let's see, ferro rod's still in there. I noticed the ferro rod. I tried to rip it out before. It's not bad. The glue's actually pretty decent. Um, can't really remove that. It's pretty small and thin, as you can see. But, you know, it'll do something. Boy, I, I'm on the fence. Under two bucks? Like, this is terrible, but as, like, a nice little supplement or just, like, a little easy carrier with, like, a wick and a flint all in one? Or I keep calling it a flint. It's a ferro rod. Um, I don't know. Let's just, let's test this right now. I can tell just by looking at it. Oh, wow. Did that break? That's so weird. I didn't expect that. All right. I, I actually didn't expect that. That broke because it's brittle. Um, I expected this to flex and, and like turn into an oval so the clip ditch it um if you seal it in like a, a plastic bag or like you know some some nice plastic with an impulse sealer uh okay i have an alternative though to this even for the price because we got to match the price because what my, my first thought was okay get one of those like camping fuel canisters or like a little thermos like that they have an insane screw on top that's like bulletproof and this thing you could probably throw it off a cliff it wouldn't leak uh love them i mentioned them on the channel and then just get something to light it with just a, an actual ferro rod a bigger one and a knife you know there you go but all that costs more than two bucks so what are we gonna do to match it all right one dollar yeah i know we're doing it again also one dollar just buy a smaller size all right, cotton ball. We have a whole video on this, but it didn't get very many views, so a lot of people missed it, and it was like a year ago. All right, cotton ball with uh, petroleum jelly on it. We'll just pretend that this is a real ferro rod, like just a normal little, uh, about $2 ferro rod. You can get a, a small one. And then just a knife. You get a cheap knife or a back end of a blade, or half of them, uh, like the Harbor Freight ones, come with a, a little scraper thing, little little metal serrated thing. Let's see if we can get this lit. Look at that. That's a more secure way to carry fuel. And watch this burn time. It's, just, it's the superior way to do it. So the pretend metal casing, the questionable flint, and the, the you know, you got to put it at an angle unless you want to hit it down and then it hits your finger. I don't really like much about this other than the price. I do think it won't leak, though. I mean, those look like pretty good seals. So if this was $4, I'd be against it. But for like $1.50, I don't know. 
Maybe I would pick up a five pack of them um, and be happy with that as long as I had something else. But the clips are bad, the plastic's bad, and honestly, if I broke that, I well, let me try stepping on it. Let's see what that does. Wow, one solid heel strike there, and uh, we're still holding liquid. It's not bad, actually. That's, <laughs> okay, let's try uh, kind of stepping on it on a rock. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's that real brittle kind of plastic. Uh, this would age, too. Not just in sunlight, but in, like, temperatures and just in the air. So, uh, see what's in here. And yes, I, I broke the ferro rod in half. Oops. And yeah, it's still going. Oh, that's how it works. Okay. So the wick is in, like, some kind of padded material. That soaks it up. And in theory, there's no, like, well, not no liquid, but the liquid's in this, so it wouldn't just spill. So if I didn't overfill it, it's safe-ish. But that little tiny guard, I don't know. I like my idea better. But they're, they're interesting. They're not a complete and utter failure. But just buy a separate ferro rod and then just, you know, make these yourself. I think that's a better solution, but certainly neat. Certainly worth uh, testing out. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.